Just two Aztecs sitting at a desk talking a little football. Welcome back to the 49ers Unscripted Podcast. I am joined by 49ers offensive lineman Daniel Brunskill. Daniel, I think I feel like I would be accurate to say you're a pretty popular guy this week amongst 49ers fans, maybe even amongst the entire NFL. But before we get into Monday night, how are you? How's this season treating you? What's going on in your world? I'm doing pretty good. Just uh, grinding through the season. It's a long season. Uh, just trying to get on track. Speaking of getting on track, that, that's literally the first thing I wanted to talk to you about. Before talking about Monday's game in particular, you look at where this team was sitting going into this week. You guys obviously aren't where you guys wanted to be. Was there a specific message around the team, around the locker room? Was there a sense of urgency? Was this game against the Rams on Monday night, was this for you guys labeled a must-win game? I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it's definitely a must-win game. But, I mean, you look at any game, it should be a must-win. You're going in to win the game. Um, but it's where we're sitting right now at four, or at going in at three and five, um, yeah, it had to be a must-win game. I mean, we need to start getting some wins, and we need to start getting wins fast. We're starting to get to the middle of the season, and uh, like some of the coaches always say, November and December is what defines your season. Um, and so at this point in the season, everything's a must-win, and we got to get that to, to get into the dance, and that's what it takes. Now, obviously, you know, everyone's kind of on this high coming off of a game like that, performing the way literally every side of the ball performed on Monday night. How do you build off of that momentum? And I say that because, you know, you hear in football that 24-hour rule. You have 24 hours, whether it's the highs, whether it's the lows, you flush that and you go on to the next week. But is it possible to build off of that and take that into this week against the Jaguars? I think it uh, definitely can build off of it. It's huge because we definitely, it was a good win to get and we, we need to keep stacking them. And then at the same time, um, I mean, we're four and five, so I mean, we have no room to talk to anybody, um, no matter what win we had. So I mean, we still got to stack wins up, and and like I said, November to December, we got to define this team and show where we're going to get to the playoffs or not. And and that starts right now. So every game's a must win, and every game has to be taken super seriously. And it doesn't matter what win you had the week before or whatnot. Um, so it's good to have that win. It's good to get in the right direction. But right now, I mean, you got to focus on the Jags and. And they're a good football team, and so they're going to bring it to us, and, and we got to go give it to them. I know you said we got to focus on the Jags, but I'm, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about kind of the elephant in the room. And uh, that's your Monday night performance uh, against a three-time defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. First question I want to ask you, after that game, was your phone blowing up? Was there a reaction, the guys in the locker room? Just what kind of response did you get following that game? Um... Yeah, I had uh, people hit me up. Uh, I mean, my fa friends and family always hit me up after the game and uh, let me know. Um, I think everybody was just excited to get a win uh, and finally get back on track. Um, it's It's been rough, and uh, just the win alone was everybody's like, super excited. Yeah. So going into, well, even today, um, Kyle Shanahan, he spoke with the media, and he said that there's, the game's never too big for you. And – when you're going against a guy like Aaron Donald, how do you prepare for a game like that? Do you put like a face to the name, a number to the name, or is it more so you attack every single matchup as if it's just a faceless person and you just got to do your job? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you try to attack it like every, every person's, you know, uh, I mean, they're at the end of the day, everybody's an NFL player. So you try to attack it that way. Um, but 99 and Aaron Donald, I mean, he's a, he's a special player. Yeah. And when there are special players on the field, it's it's different. You do have to put a face to the number, and and you got to know where he is at all times. Because at the end of the day, at all times, you got to know where he is and have presence around him. So um, so it, it you want to take it to where you you know you treat it the same the whole time. But at the same time, he's such a good player that you have to know where he is. 49ers open up that game uh, following that interception by Jimmy Ward with an. 18 play drive Trent Williams he was asked if that leaves a mark on the defense and he said it kind of leaves a mark on you guys as well having to have a drive that long but coming out of that game or coming out of that that series does that kind of set the tone for the offense when you kind of go through that entire drive it ends in that score with George Kittle how does that set kind of the momentum for you guys 
I mean, it's definitely huge going into the game and, and just to be able to rattle off that many plays and then to end it with a touchdown is huge. Um, it's, it's definitely a tone setter and uh, it, it's just a great drive to be able to just go down there and run the ball and, and just take it to them. Uh, I, I think that's a huge point in the game. Let's talk about the 49ers O-line. I'm not sure if you're a huge stats guy, but Pro Football Focus going into Monday night had your, this unit ranked seventh in the league. Um, I'm sure since then, coming off of that game, it is improved. But what clicks? What is clicking for this 49ers O-line? Um, I mean, we, we just have some great guys out there and uh, um, some great coaches put us in a great situation. And at the end of the day, I think it's a team thing. Uh, I don't care about like rankings and pro football focus isn't the, the best ranking in the world. But uh, at the end of the day, I think it's just our offense and, and our running backs. They were hitting the uh, they were hitting the holes really hard. Uh, they were running super hard. Jeff was back. That was great to see him. Uh, and and I, I think our backs actually did a tremendous job. He's not everything was clean and, and they were still hitting the holes really hard. Um, we have some of the best tight ends in the league. And then, and then Jimmy and the receivers, they're always getting it done. So, I mean, that's just huge for us to, to be able to go. And, and I think it's, we got a great group of guys and with the leaders of Trent and Lake and Alex, uh, they just, you know, we're always getting together, doing some extra stuff and, and but we're going to Mike's house and having some fun. So it's, it's just a great cohesive group. And I think the, the more time we spend together and the more games we get in together, all of us, it's, it's just huge. Uh, you brought up Alex Mack's name, the guy that's to your left, uh, Pro Bowl talent right there. What kind of player is Alex Mack, and, and how has it been for you lining up beside him? It's been awesome. I mean, Alex is a super smart guy. He's, he's a fun guy. He loves football. He's got a tremendous motor. I mean, if you look at uh, anybody on the field, he's probably one of the first ones to get around the ball almost every time, no matter where he is on the field. Um, and I mean, where he at, where he's at in his career, it's just crazy to watch a guy with that kind of motor. Um, but then also how smart he is. I mean, he gets us in, there's so many times where looks won't be always perfect and defense is giving you something uh, crazy and he gets us in the right thing a lot of the time. And, and it's just huge to have that veteran talent and, and presence just to be able to keep everything calm and get everybody on the right page. Now, obviously, you guys are playing without Mike McGlinchey, who we are wishing a very speedy recovery too. But... Um, there's been some people that's been playing in his spots, in particular this last game. But I want to start off with Jalen Moore, the rookie. Uh, he's been able to step in, fill that spot. Um, he played a little bit on the other side when Trent Williams was out uh, for a game. But what have you seen out of the rookie, and what kind of player is Jalen? I mean, Jalen's a great player. He's got great athletic ability. And for a rookie, he's got a good presence about him to where it's not too big for him. Um, and, and he goes in there and he's relaxed and he goes in uh, and does a great job and it sucks to be out with Mike. Uh, Mike's going to be dearly missed. Uh, everybody loves Mike. He's a great player. Yeah. He's having a hell of a season. Uh, one of the best seasons he's had here and, and he's doing a tremendous job. Um, but uh, it's nice that we had plenty of depth and with Jalen and Tom coming in, it, it, it's those guys, you know, they're coming in. And, and doing a great job for us so uh and they're they're fighting their butts off because they they love mike just as much and they want to um, do well for him so it's it's awesome to have that group i know we're showing a lot of love to some of your line mates but i feel like we can't talk about this 49ers o-line without talking about you and if i am not mistaken you have played every spot on this 49ers o-line aside from left guard am i right because lakin's demanding that yeah, Lakin, uh, Lakin's a guy that's been in that spot, and he ain't giving that spot up. He loves it. Uh, yeah, no, I've started at all, all four um, except for left guard, uh, and the only time I've got reps at left guard in a live game was uh, Lakin lost a shoe, so I got to <laughs> play like two snaps there. But, uh, yeah, been a little bit all over the place. So uh, I like to call you, and I feel like Kyle Shanahan has said this before, but you're like a Swiss Army knife. You've been praised for your versatility and ability to play all over the line. But is it challenging to have to know so many different positions, or do you have to adjust? Does it just work for you? Does it click? How how, how do you find success in so many different spots? Um, well, it's, it, it's pretty similar. Like with the offense, it just kind of flips sides on you. Um, but and then the technique is the biggest thing that's the challenging um, from the offense standpoint. If you know where you're doing at tackle, you should be able to play right and left. 
Um, and then once you go into guard, you, you learn a few more things. Uh, and then center, you know, there's another ballpark. But uh, so that that point of it, there, there is a lot to learn. But once you do know like all the spots to the play, then at that point, it's just technique and then learning each technique to each position. That's probably the hardest thing is because each position as you go in and out there, the, the technique changes for quite a bit. So uh, um, it's not just blocking the guy in front of you. The, the ways you block them is a little different. Um, your sets of tackle are different than when your sets are guard and center. So I think those are the biggest thing is just getting the technique down. Okay, so if you had to pick your favorite spot to play on the O-line, where would it be? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a hard question. I, I, at the end of the day, it's just what spot they put me in. Uh, I don't know if I could pick one, uh, one specifically. <laughs> that's because he's the Swiss Army knife, and also he's a former San Diego State Aztec. Daniel Brunskill, appreciate having you here on the Unscripted Podcast. We cannot wait to see this O-line continue its success and uh, continue that ultimate goal that you were just talking about here a few minutes ago. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you.